This is Pita Beek. At 70 years, Pita is a self-made climate activist. Just like Greta Thunberg in Sweden, one day Pete decided to start a silent revolution in his home country, Indonesia. A revolution that is turning once deforested land back into lush forests. Pete is from Indonesia, Borneo, and like most of the people on this island, he belongs to the Dayak tribe. A tribe known for being so connected to nature, they call forests their supermarket, as their basis of life. More than 25% of the world population depends on forests for survival. When managed poorly, this puts forests and wildlife under pressure. Indonesia has lost almost 25% of its original forest cover since 1990. The main culprit is the palm oil industry. It has cleared vast pieces of land to satisfy global demand for this oil. I met Pete in 2017, when I first visited a Kuzis tree planting project in Indonesia. Back then we went out to see the farmers Pete had convinced to plant trees with him. These farmers had previously deforested their lands to produce rice or plant palm oil trees. Rural communities in Indonesia often depend on the palm oil industry to earn their salary. Multinational companies promise them a lot of money in exchange for their lands to plant palm oil on them, which they promise them will also create extra jobs for the community, tapping the fruit of the palm oil, collecting it and bringing it to their factories. The problem is that monocultures of any tree species destroy the soil. So the palm oil companies exploit farmers' lands, pump a lot of fertilizers in there to keep the palm trees growing, and then, eventually, they leave. At a certain point, the soil just can't grow anything anymore. So farmers are left with no productive land and no reliable source of income. This is what Pete wanted to fix. But how does one change the palm oil industry on their own? Instead of thinking too big, Pete acted locally. He went around through his hometown and convinced a couple of hundred farmers to do things differently. Instead of selling their lands off or just planting rice in them, he asked them to plant all kinds of productive trees around them, like rubber, jenkol, tenkawang, or durian. All of which produce fruits and other forest goods, like sugar, nuts, which the farmers and their families can use either to consume themselves or to sell in local and international markets all without destroying the forest, but rather helping it regenerate. This is Sigan. He is one of the farmers working with Pete. At first, he was skeptical, but because his land was no longer productive, he decided to give Pete's ideas a try. Back in 2017, this is how Sigan's land looked like. Fast forward two years later, this is Pete standing on that same spot, now filled with a lush, regenerated forest. That picture was taken in February 2019. It might not seem like a revolution, but what Pete is doing is causing a chain reaction. At date, Pete has convinced about 2,000 farmers in Borneo to plant trees on their lands, which is giving them a better life and protecting the climate. With time, more and more neighboring communities are asking to join Pete's program. As climate activist Greta Thunberg once said, you are never too small to make a difference. And as Pete is proving, you are never too old to care for the generations coming after you. Hi, I'm Fatima, and I document Ecosia's tree planting projects in Latin America, Spain, and Southeast Asia. Ecosia is a search engine that plants trees. Ecosia works like any other search engine, but we use our money to plant trees all over the world. If you'd like to see more of our videos, make sure to subscribe to Ecosia's YouTube channel. For more background info on this episode, make sure to read the description of this video. We'll link to useful resources on the topic. And download Ecosia to help us plant more trees. Thank you.